And for the headlines, weather forecast, Pagasa announces the beginning of the rainy season. Local news, COWD Board of Directors and General Manager refuse to step down, oppose Elwa takeover in CDO. Elwa appointed interim officials have started working at COWD. The iconic Carmen Bridge now has DBM funding for renovation. A police officer and four civilians were arrested in an illegal drug operation in Miss Or. National News Group plans fishing activity in Masinlok un undeterred by China's fishing ban. Remula asserts no sacred cows as DOJ investigates Pasay City judge for bribery allegations. International News Donald Trump found guilty on all charges in hush money trial. Chelsea Manalo admits she nearly gave up on her Miss Universe Philippines journey. Vice Ganda will host LOL, Last One Laughing Philippines. Obiena places 7th in CZEC Republic despite facing multiple setbacks. Maliksi and Quinto lead the charge as Meralco surprises Hinebra, forcing a do or dime game 7. International feature. Malcolm Gladwell re-examines societal trends in his latest book, Revenge on the Ticking Point. National feature, Anything is Possible. Beauty Queen Alexi Brooks realizes her dream of owning her own home. Trivia, Everest 1953 inaugural steps, Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay. Good morning Philippines, magandang umaga Luzon, ng mayo adlaw, Visayas, sa Mindanao. Today is Monday, June 3, 2024. I am Athalia P. Saniel. Weather forecast. Pag-asa announces the beginning of rainy season. The Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration Announced that, the, uh, what, announced that the onset of the rainy season was marked by scattered rain showers, thunderstorms, and the presence of Typhoon Aghon. Pagasa Administrator Nathaniel Servando stated that the southwest monsoon or Habagat is expected in the following days, leading to significant rainfall in western Luzon and Visayas. Additionally, there is a high likelihood of La Nina conditions from July to September, potentially causing above normal rainfall towards the year's end. Despite occasional breaks, known as monsoon breaks, the rainy conditions are expected to persist. Although Typhoon Aghan is outside the Philippine area of responsibility, its influence has enhanced the southwesterly wind flow, resulting in moderate to heavy rains, over parts of northern Luzon, central Luzon, and Mimaropa until Thursday. Local news. COWD Board of Directors and General Manager refused to step down. Oppose Elwa take over in CDO. The current Board of Directors and Management of the Cagayan de Oro Water District have acknowledged the full takeover by interim officials sent by the local Water Utilities Administration in Cagayan de Oro City. This follows the commencement of work by the COWD Interim Board of Directors and General Manager in accordance with ELWA's Board of Trustees' resolution to address the City Water District's challenges. Dr. Jerry Canio, a member of the COWD Board of Directors, expressed opposition and 
to Elwa's interference in their office internal affairs, prompting them to seek clarification from the office of the Government Corporate Council regarding Elwa's intervention in COWD. As a result, two sets of board of directors and general managers are operating within the government-controlled COWD. Elwa's actions stem from a directive by President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. following disputed payables issues, which led to Metro Pacific Water Company, owned by Manny V. Pangilinan, temporarily cutting water supply to COWD in the first week of May. Elwa's appointed interim officials have started working at COWD. The interim board of directors, along with the appointed general manager by the local Water Utilities Administration, have commenced work at the Cagayan de Oro Water District in the city effective yesterday. Elwa was initially tasked with addressing various issues faced by COWD, including significant debts owed to Kobe, the district's water supplier. Serving as interim, COWD board members are Attorney Don Capunan, Amelia De La Rosa, Elwa Chairman Ronnie Ong, Attorney Noel Bacal, representing the city government, and Elwa Engineer Antonio Ramirez, who will act as interim board chairman. Fermin Harales, a local of Misamis Oriental, has been appointed as the interim general manager. Harales expressed their commitment to restoring COWD's operations to normalcy within a few months under their management. The idea of Elwa's takeover has faced significant opposition, as some argue that it falls outside their jurisdiction. Despite being mandated by President Bongbo Marcos during his visit to the city on May 16, 2024. The iconic Carmen Bridge now has DBM funding for renovation. In Cagayan de Oro City, the Department of Budget and Management approved the request of the Department of Public Works and Highways, Region 10, not only to reinforce but also to redesign the iconic Carmen Bridge for safety reasons, as stated by DPWH 10 Regional Director Zenaida Tan. The bridge, dating back to 1940s, is deemed hazardous and in need of improvements. Although DPWH initial retrofitting program of works was endorsed by the central office, DBM preferred to replace all materials. Tan explained that if the plan contradicts the National Historical Commission's guidelines, they would revert to the initial funding allocation of 900 million pesos. Cagayan Heritage Advocate Group expressed no concern about DPWH sudden change in tone, with member engineer Raul Ilogon highlights that if DPWH's claims about DBM's influence are true, it's not the people's fault. However, Ilogon reminded all interested parties that Opposing this decision means challenging the Republic of the Philippines as the bridge is not only under the city's jurisdiction but also registered as a cultural property, thus protected by national laws. Despite recent discussions, the city government aims to widen the bridge to four lanes if the project receives approval. A police officer and four civilians were arrested in an illegal drug operation in Miss Or. In Cagayan de Oro City, an active police officer and four civilians are facing charges for violating Republic Act 9165, also known as the Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002, as they were brought to the Provincial Prosecutor's Office this week. This comes after they were apprehended by the group led by Tagolwan Police Station Commander Captain Ralph Rexon, Layo during an anti-illegal drug bypass operation in Sitio Santo Nino, Barangay Baluarte, Tagulwan, Misamis Oriental, last night. Layo identified the active police officer as Patrolman Raymond Asaitona, currently assigned to the Regional Mobile Force Battalion 13 in the Caraga region, where his 9mm pistol, along with ammunition and PNP IDs, were confiscated. 
Aside from the officer, civilians of various ages serving as laborers in Misamis Oriental and Bukidnon were also arrested. Confiscated from the suspects were the buy bus money amounting to 500 pesos, seven sachets of suspected shabu, foil, and lighters. Police Regional Office 10 Director Brigadier General Ricardo Layo Jr. initially ordered to intensify the campaign against illegal drugs and to not tolerate any involvement in drug-related activities, whether from within the force or other sectors of society. Pag-abot ako din, mamarkin yung line ko. Mamarkin na ko. Ayon yun sa last two days sa uto. Huli ko, huli ko na sa balay. Pag-abot sa balay, din siyo. Si mga bata. Ah, sila na po kakayos, hindi sir. Ha? Sila na po kakayos. Sila na kapag isi mo pag-barker, basta pato sa mga motor. Anto, karun. Isa kang po isi. 2006. Ay, nung garun. 2006 to 2034, sa dugay-dugay na yun, sir ba? So, ang inyong kita din sa sakto na yun, o? At tulungayin pa rin sa kasupan, hugas, kahit sa kurinti. Ah, so, imutanan ang konser, gasto? Ang tungami sa akong asawa. O. Tay, maputa ni kurinti, pag hindi ka bayat, sa doon ka bulan. Yan ang sa eskwela si mga anak, sir. Gusto mong po ito maagi ni mga anak, sir, no? Sa alawan, sa masahe, ang tamay mo. Ay, pamaliti pa. Oh, sana ginahimo ni mo. Budget ni ni ko full. Okay. Oh, diba ni si. Asi gin ka pamana tinong tangan diri. Ay mi sa sikulan. Ko pa daadlo ko pa diri sir. Oh. Muli sakta. Muli ni tay si tinang gabi. Okay. Ay sakten pa. Daani mo diri sa ito sa buntag diri sa. Tayo sa buntag. Mangala sa isa. Buntag. Pero sa mong adlo diri sa pila ko sa unsay kinakatako. Mas kalibo ha, minggu. Yung ganitong oras, pwede yung minggu. Kita ka ng 400. Ah, di lisa mo sa pariyas? 400. Hindi mo ganit pariyas. Dugo-dugo na ganyan ka din sir ba? So, wala ka lahing ka ng gito dal sir, maka namang taglang trabaho? Wala na dito? Mga bata mo, kasi manggit, mula ba? O patakbo ang wanak? Puro na kalid. Puro, pipay, o pridnay. Ito, dito, sir, kung hindi ka mayroon, ba? Nakaling like sa kaming kapangita po ka ron, sir, na may mga kabatan ko ron na justice-side tungkol sa hindi na kabuhan ka sa kung sa pangita po din sa itong sudat influence ba kami sa mga sa social media o na nung mabot na sila sa panahon na itinin nila ilang mga kinabuhi. So, sa may misurya rin na, sir. Wala may mga sabi sa akong mga anak ko kung hindi Tingnan mo mayo. Isa ay ilantan sila. Kahit hindi nga agad ang sumbal, kahit sambal nila. Mugaya na. Kaya sa akin. So, ang sagay mo ma-advise sa kanang mga batan ko na inaala, baka sa Commit of Suicide, nga naman mabot sila sa punto na gahikong sila. Problema baka na sa pamilya o kung may kasagarang problema na sa sabi. Kaya mo halang mag-sabas yun, sir? Ah, hindi naman siguro. Lahat ka siya lang. Antod, antod.
National News. Group plans fishing activity in Masin Lock, undeterred by China's fishing ban. Despite China's unilateral declaration of a fishing ban in areas including the West Philippine Sea, fishermen from Masin Lock remain undeterred. On the eve of National Fisher Folk Day, around 40 Filipino fishermen embarked on a collective fishing expedition, defying China's ban. Jojo Esihan, president of Samahang Panatag, emphasized that fishing in their own territory shouldn't pose any problem, despite the threats. He highlighted the impact of Chinese aggression on small fishers in Masinloc, with fishermen now competing for catch in nearer waters due to restrictions, as Scarborough showed. Fernando Hicap, chair of Pamalakaya, expressed fishermen's determination to oppose such threats, emphasizing that China's actions are inhuman, unjust, and illegal. While China announced a nearly five-month fishing ban, Philippine government agencies refused to acknowledge its legitimacy. Remulia asserts no sacred cows as DOJ investigates Pasay City charge for bribery allegations. Justice Secretary Jesus Crispin Remulia emphasized that there will be no exceptions in their anti-corruption efforts. As a Pasay City judge involved in a 6 million bribery case faces preliminary investigation. This statement follows the recent arrest of Pasay City Regional Trial Court Branch 108th Clerk of Court Mary Joy Lagman in an entrapment operation by the National Bureau of Investigation. Lagman and Branch 108 presiding Judge Albert Cancino are under preventive suspension by the Supreme Court due to their alleged involvement in a bribery case related to a civil case handled by the court. The Department of Justice stated that Cancino will be invited for preliminary investigation, as his name was mentioned in the complaint by the NBI, although current evidence is insufficient. Remula stressed the importance of upholding the highest standards of integrity among justice officials highlighting the recommendation of charges against Lagman for direct bribery, violation of the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act, and the Code of Conduct and Ethical Standards for Public Officials and Employees. International News Donald Trump found guilty on all charges in harsh money trial. In a groundbreaking development, barely five months ahead of the election, a New York jury convicted Donald Trump on all charges in his hush money case on Thursday. The historic trial, marking the first criminal trial of a former U.S. president, concluded with the 77-year-old Trump found guilty on all 34 charges of falsifying business records to conceal a payment intended to silence Porn star Stormy Daniels. Trump, likely to appeal the verdict, remained composed without an immediate reaction as the conviction was announced. While the conviction plunges the United States into uncharted political waters, it does not preclude Trump from running for, for the White House again, even if Judge Juan Merchan imposes a prison sentence. The verdict comes just weeks before the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee, where Trump is expected to formally receive the party's nomination to challenge Democratic President Joe Biden on November 5. The jury, comprising 12 members, deliberated for over 11 hours across two days at the conclusion of the remarkable five-week trial held nondescript Manhattan courtroom. Entertainment. Chelsea Manalo admits she nearly gave up on her Miss Universe PH journey. I was on the brink of giving up, revealed Miss Universe Philippines 2024 Chelsea Manalo in her recent interview with Boya Bunda on GMA7's Fast Talk. 
The Bulacan beauty queen shared that the financial constraints almost led her to quit her pageant journey, particularly due to the extended four-month duration of the competition. Coming as an independent candidate without ample resources, Manalo expressed the challenges of managing expenses, including transportation, dresses, and makeup, which she had to cover independently. However, with the support of her family, friends from the industry, and assistance from the local government of Bulacan, she preserved. Manalo also acknowledged the gig's Christy McGarry as the strongest candidate in their batch. Regarding her role model, she cited Pia Worksback, the Philippines' third Miss Universe title holder in 2015, and expressed openness to exploring opportunities in show business. Vice Ganda will host LOL, Last One Laughing Philippines. Superstar comedian Vice Ganda is set to host a Philippine adaption of the popular international comedy series, LOL, Last One Laughing. Prime Video Philippines confirmed on Thursday that the series hosted by Vice will premiere on July 4, exclusively on Prime Video. The show, which has seen successful versions in Italy, France, Germany, and other countries, will feature Vice leading 10 comedians in a comedic battle showcasing their talents. Known as one of the main hosts of ABS-CBN's It's Showtime, Vice previously hosted the acclaimed musical show Everybody Sing. Additionally, Vice is gearing up to release a new song in June and has a new movie in the pipeline. Sports. Obiana places 7th in CZEC Republic despite facing multiple setbacks. EJ Obiana faced several setbacks during the Ostrava Golden Spike in the CZEC Republic on May 28, mm. resulting in his lowest clearance in nearly two years and his 7th place finish. The Olympian detailed a series of misfortunes on his Facebook page, including a broken pole that hampered his performance, limiting him to a clearance of 5.52M and preventing him from re replicating his previous year's bronze finish. Despite his challenges, Sweden's Armand Duplantis secured his 7th gold of the year with a 6.00M jump, while France Ethan Cormont acclaimed Silver and Belgium's Ben Broders and the CZEC Republic's David Holy shared bronze. Obiana expressed frustration but gratitude for being unharmed. Following transport issues from the United States to the CZEC Republic and difficulties during competition day. Currently ranked second in the world, Obiana aims to bounce back and will compete in the Oslo Bislet Games in Norway on May 30. Maliksi and Quinto lead the charge as Morocco surprises Hinebra, forcing a do or dime game 7. The Morocco Bulls secured a crucial victory against Barangay Hinebra San Miguel in their 2024 PBA Philippine Cup semi finals match up, winning 86 81 at the Araneta Coliseum in Quezon City. Alain Maliksi and Bong Quinto played pivotal roles for the Bolts, with Maliksi contributing 14 points and Quinto delivering 23 points, along with key performances from Chris Newsom. Quinto, hailed as the best player of the game, expressed its determination to help the team overcome their rivals. Despite the strong efforts from Hinebra's Christian Stan Hardinger and Japheth Aguilar, the Bulls managed to maintain their lead and force a decider in Batangas. The two teams will face each other again on Friday, with the winner advancing to the league's All-Filipino Crown Final Series against the San Miguel Beer Men. International Feature Malcolm Gladwell re-examines societal trends in his latest book, Revenge of the Tipping Point. Little, Brown & Co. revealed plans for Malcolm Gladwell's forthcoming book, Revenge of the Tipping Point, 
slated for release on October 1. This sequel follows nearly 25 years after Gladwell's immensely popular debut, The Tipping Point, How Little Things Can Make a Big Difference. Described as offering a fresh perspective on various social issues, the new book delves into inquiries such as why Los Angeles became the hub of bank robberies in the late 80s and early 90s, the significance of the magic third in terms of ra racial equity, and the unexpected connections between big cats and cluster of teen suicide. Gladwell's latest work revisits the concept of social epidemics, exploring how we influence and manipulate the spread of ideas, viruses, and trends, sometimes yielding success and other times leading to calamitous outcomes. Alongside his renowned titles like Blink, Outliers, and the Bomber Mafia, Gladwell is recognized as a veteran New Yorker staff writer and the host of the podcast Revisionist History. Everything is achievable. Beauty queen Alexi Brooks realizes her dream of owning her own home. Recently crowned Miss Echo International Philippines, Alexi Brooks has finally acquired a place she can call her own. Taken to Instagram, the beauty queen shared a video unveiling her loft apartment, emphasizing to her followers the significance of perseverance and hard work in achieving dreams. Reflecting on her humble upbringing and the challenges of not having her own space, Brooks expressed gratitude and joy upon realizing her long-held dream. Her home serves not only as a personal sanctuary, but also as a symbol of hope and the potential for positive change. Encouraging others to believe in the power of resilience and forward momentum, Brooks conveyed her me message of optimism and possibility. Her friends and fans, including fellow beauty queens like Christy McGarry and Alexandra Rosales, extended their congratulations and support for her latest achievement. Hailing from Iloilo, Brooks is set to represent the Philippines in the upcoming Miss Echo International 2025 pageant, succeeding Chantal Smid, the first runner-up in the previous edition. <laughs> By contemporary standards, the 1953 British expedition, led by Sir John Hunt in a military-style fashion, was remarkably extensive but oddly skewed towards the lower ranks. It involved 350 porters, 20 share pass, and a plethora of supplies to support just 10 climbers at the forefront. George Band, now 73 and a member of the expedition, reminisces about the meticulous planning and the, and the pressure associated with being selected for the summit team. A recurring theme in major Everest expeditions for years to come. Yet, such high stakes would never be replicated. Despite initial setbacks and logistical challenges, the team reached the South Cold a pivotal staging area for summit attempt on May 21, albeit later than ideal given the impending monsoon. The first summit bid, led by Tom Bordillion and Charles Evans, fell short but three days later, Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay set out, with their pairing strategically planned by Hunt. Overcoming obstacles including the infamous Hillary step, they reached the summit at 11.30 a.m. on May 29, becoming the first men to do so. Their monumental achievement catapulted them to global fame and marked a turning point in monitoring history, inspiring countless others to pursue the ultimate challenge of Everest. And that was the information we got from here and abroad. Keep listening and watching. Please subscribe, follow, like, and share Pinoy Rob on YouTube channel. And thank you very much for watching Pinoy Rob News Channel Kagayanti Oro. And I ask once more to support and subscribe and turn on notifications for more updates and more info. Again, thank you very much and have a wonderful day.